Welcome to Lamora's Cards and Horrors, I'm Matthew and this is another entry in my CDH beginner guide video series where I have experienced members of the community come on to help educate players about one of their decks. If you enjoy this video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, or supporting me on Patreon so I can make more of these videos for you and make them better. And with that, I'll pass it over to this episode's guest. Hey everyone, I'm Hal. I maintain one of the two Mad Farm primers on the database, as well as the Advantage Blue Pod primer. I've been playing CH for about six years, and you can find more out about me on Twitter at Millennium Gaming, as well as the YouTube channel Past the Primer, which I have been real lazy with and been traveling, so I haven't updated anything in the past two months, but it will be coming back. So Mad Farm is a Mardu Turbo Nas deck that excels in card advantage through Timna, as well as on board control through Jessica. Jessica also gives you access to an infinite mana outlet in the command zone, which we try to leverage through combos such as Bomberman, but it also has dual caster twin flame and underworld breach lines through Ad Nas that can set up those lines. So the main game plan for Mad Farm, at least the way I have it built, is you want to leverage Timna and creatures with value that also happen to be invasive, such as Saracen, Hope of Giraper, Dragon Raid Chandlers, to build card advantage until you can set up a win, usually with a lot of mana, because the deck's really good at making mana, where you can set up either an early Adnaz, mid-game Adnaz, or late-game Nas, depending on how it plays out, as well as having access to lines with Underworld Breach, Citrus Supplier Cooling the Week, or Underworld Breach, a positive mana artifact and grinding station to filter your deck in your yard, which then allows you to set up Oriok Salvagers plus Lion's Eye Diamond, which is a two card infinite mana combo that you can then dump into Jessica to kill the table. Or if need be, if that line isn't available to you, you can set up pre-combat dual caster plus twin flame as long as you have another creature in play. The deck is packed with uh, tons of removal and silence effects to help you get to a state where you can win, as well as really leveraging Jessica to control the creature decks out of things such as TNT and Malcolm decks. Also really good at killing the Gilas and such. And this gives you a strong set of cards that kind of lets you get to a state where it's an inevitable win even though you're lacking interaction being a Sans Blue deck. Mad Farm is an interesting deck because it has the option based off pod composition to either mulligan for extremely fast turn two, sometimes turn one wins off fast nozzles. But it also has the ability, if you assess the pod correctly, to just set up an early Timna board state to accrue value until you're able to force your win in. And it is a deck that's extremely good at forcing the win. I'd say the average turn one in a Timna hand would be try to set up an early value piece, whether it be like an Esper Sentinel or an evasive creature that lets you get in, such as Saracenet, Ragavan, Dragon Rage Chandler, things that are good attackers with Timna, and then establish a Timna, and then establish a Jessica on turn three to let you clear the board and get in and draw cards. And usually in those games, you're attempting your wins turn four, turn five, after another player has been stopped. And that's why we play so many silence effects. Because even though we don't have on the stack interaction, we have ways to stumble people's wins or make it where people can't interact with our own win attempts. So cards like Ranger Captain and Grand Abolisher have really high upsides there, as well as the several removal spells that we play just to prevent ourselves from losing early and deal with hate pieces that might affect our board and game plan. As a new player playing Mad Farm, one thing you might fall into having issues with is it is a Turbo Nas deck, but this deck really excels when you're able to understand the format more. So as you get better as a player and understand CDH and what you're playing against, you'll realize the type of hands and game plans and pivots you'll want to take. A lot of times people will focus on the wrong thing early and see something like a collector roof, rest in peace or drain it that prevents you from going for your win attempts in certain situations. But the deck has so many answers to those and it's so good at accruing card value with Timna and controlling the game with Jessica that usually you just kind of play your game till things happen. You gotta know when to jam, when not to jam. And that's just something with all Sans Blue decks. Not having the comfort of counter spells really makes you understand when it's your turn and when it's not. And another thing I would say is that as long as you keep practicing with the deck, you'll understand these patterns more. 
and you will see your play skill with the deck drastically improve. This hand, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I think I ship this. I think you need to mulligan aggressively. It has a piece of our combo, but it doesn't really establish anything else. You don't have a second land to pitch the Mox Diamond, so you can't sequence. Just off the blind seven, land Mox Diamond into Signet, untap, present a threat, because you don't have a good threat. Like, you don't have an early Timna. You don't have a good Timna attacker. If you just put your Bomberman into play, yeah, that's fine. Like, I guess they can attack, but it's going to eat removal. And then Pyro Recruiter's probably getting something like a Dockside, so you're not doing anything with it till turn four, which is it's just way too slow in this deck. It doesn't do anything. I would probably think about keeping it. It has early mana in the Mox Opal Chrome Mox Hope. It turns on the Opal, so you'd have to like think what you're going to bottom, which sets up into a, a good Timna hand while the hope also being an onboard silence effect. The question is what you keep. And to be honest, I think in a pod that would have some like Najila's or Malcolm decks or something, you know, as a creature based combo, I'd keep the swords. And then after that, I'd keep the ritual. And then the next thing is like, what do you want to keep the pitch, the Chrome Mox? So you just bottom whatever you feel the weakest card is in the pod. I think by default, you keep the land Opal Chrome Mox Hope because it enables the Opal, also enables the turn one Hope into turn two Timna. And then you're drawing cards, and what's better than that? Like, it's it's a fine three. It's just the sequencing is interesting. It depends on seed order, because um, this is a three that could theoretically turn to Nos, but you would be risking it to draw a black source off the top. If you wanted to play it safer on a not risking it for the biscuit and hoping to top deck a black source, if, you, if, you, if you're the risky person, you keep the, the Mana Crypt Dark Ray Imp Sil, Play the Black Source if you draw it off the top, Imp Sil for Nas, turn two, just jam a Nas. If you're the least risky person, you keep the Wooded Foothills, the Mana Crypt, in either the Imp Sil to tutor what you think you need. If you're first in seat order, I think you keep Foothills, Mana Crypt, Imp Sil, tutor for Will, refresh your hand. If you're lower in the seat order, it's a keepable three, I just don't know where you're supposed to take. When you're first picking up this deck, I pointed on it earlier, but understanding pod composition is your strong suit because every deck at the table has a role to play and is the non-blue deck. Your role is not to interact. Your role is either to go fast or to survive. And that's why the deck's built the way it is. And I think looking for consistent Timna hands at the beginning is going to be the best thing for a new player. You can sit by yourself, goldfish through the deck, and you can understand how to play out the Nas lines and all that. But understanding how to play those Timna hands is only going to come with experience of playing the deck, even if it's not the most optimal thing to do in the time. And once you have the strength of both of those, you'll be able to adapt it into your play style consistently. And you'll find that this deck is a really strong deck and formidable at the table regardless of its colors so this deck excels it fighting greedy decks that run little interaction as they can just go under them it's also quite good at playing the mid-range plan because of jessica and what she allows through the game against the i'll call them dork based strategies your your hermit druid decks and tnt piles najila decks the deck really struggles when there's multiple stacks pods on the table primarily when they're non-creature based hate pieces such as stony silence and rest in peace and stuff because you only have so many ways to deal with those in the deck and you have to learn when's the proper time to deal with them it also can struggle against the super super aggressive decks that play blue such as rog silas because just on average they're faster and also have the protection this usually isn't a first to go and win deck this is usually a second or third to win deck and you're going to have to leverage player skill and sequencing and what you find is a issue very well because you don't have the answers. You don't have force of will, force of negation, stuff to just answer things. You have silences and you have removal spells. So you need to know and learn when to time those and when it's appropriate to use them. And that's one of the hardest things about playing this. Mad Farm is an extremely fun deck, and as a new player, it gives you the ability to go fast, which is always fun, as well as draw cards, which is always fun. And Jessica might be the coolest commander we have in the game, and adds so much to the pairing with Timna. And sometimes you just get to zero a Jessica on a Saracen and hit somebody for 18 and gain 18, and then Nas, and that just feels great, and I hope you have fun doing it.